put your name in? What are you doing here? My name is Michael Grasso, but everybody calls me Hoff. I got a dumb nickname a long time ago when I was 18, uh, and it just stuck because everybody thought I looked like Michael Knight from Knight Rider <laughs> when I was a little little guy, and it just stuck, and that became the my like signature. I just went with it. What's the Hoff part? Hasselhoff. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hoff, yeah. <laughs> How long have you been pinstriping and painting signs? Uh, I've been pinstriping for 14 years now. Uh, sign painting for the last few years. Um, signs have just been uh, building up more than pinstriping, but I still enjoy it. And that's why I want to teach people. You had a bit of a brand change moving from pinstriping by Hoff to ground floor sign company. What was the reason for that? Um, pinstriping is still something I do all the time. I just wanted to have like a rounded name instead of just pinstriping by Hoff. I wanted to be able to include the sign painting as well. Plus I wanted to give myself a local name to, you know, advertise things like that. What's your daily work routine like? Usually I start painting at four o'clock and I paint until I'm too tired to paint. Four o'clock in the afternoon? The afternoon, yeah. <laughs> I watch my kids during the day, okay. so we switch on and off, me and my wife, on work. Most aspiring artists want to know what paint you're using and what brush you're using. Can you talk about your setup? I only use one shot unless one shot is not available, then it's Ronin. But uh, I use MAC brushes. Uh, Excalibur pinstriping brushes. Uh, I like the little ones. I'm not really a big fat pinstripe brush holder, but that's what I usually use. What about the color selection between each paint brand? I think Ronin's got a good color selection, so you can make all the colors unless you need something specific for a job. I say get that color, but Ronin's pretty good. I like it. The, it's a little bit thicker than one shot. Uh, reducing's a little bit to reduce it is a little bit harder. You gotta add a little bit more, but one shot just is easy. Let's switch gears to sign painting and woodcuts. How important is the choice of wood, especially if the sign is for outdoor use? The choice of wood is, uh, for me, is plywood, but I get it pre-coated from a distributor in Delaware. So it comes pre-painted white, uh, you cut all the ends and then you got to seal everything and then do some extra coats on it and then you're ready to go. So it's more than just cutting and coating. How important is the wood prep before you start painting? Uh, prep is pretty important. Uh, if you don't have a good prep, then the whole sign is just going to be ruined within, wow. within months, years. And what's your final prep? Uh, I do primer and then a color coat. Okay. Uh, color coat, then paint. Uh, clearing, not so much, just because it's the paint is built for that, to take the abuse of weather. I, I roll on one shot uh, or a different outdoor paint, just depending on the situation. When you're finished your painting, do you clear over it? I let the enamel go for itself. Uh, there, I don't really see a reason to clear coat unless either it's asked for and the customer pays for it. But really it's just the color, outdoor paint, and the enamel. What are you using if you do get a clear request? I do a roll-on clear. Uh, One Shot makes a roll-on clear, I use that. Uh, or I just find a, a roll-on clear coat. Uh, I add hardener to all the enamel paint for outdoor use, so that adds some you know, protection too. Back to pinstriping, what are you working on these days? Panels, bikes, cars? Right now, a lot of bikes. I get a lot of bikes. Uh, and then we do uh, car show season starts. It's a lot of trucks. I do a lot of truck shows. Uh, that's what I started in the automotive, like, enthusiasm. I don't know. What the <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. Uh, Right now, everybody's building bikes, so it's like they want to get them done for summer. So it's like now it's like a mad, mad dash springtime showing up and you get those really nice days. And then it's just like 
oh, I need my bike pinstriped and stuff like that. So that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Do you go to their place to pinstripe or do you have them ride into your garage here? I go, I do both. So like I'll travel if the bike can't, isn't mobile or if they can't drop off, but I prefer drop offs because that's like my favorite because I have more time to sit with it and figure it all out and have a plan on what I want to do. Like when I go to, sh when I go to shops, it's like, oh, we got all this stuff going on. Like, can you do it over here in the corner? And it's like, sure. <laughs> like, but yeah. Is your setup the same for pinstriping as well as sign painting? Pinstriping, it tried and true. Same same stuff everybody's been using for all those years. Sign painting is the same way. It's just, you know, the names change, brushes get better, paint gets somewhat better, maybe. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> but every all the chemicals ruined everything, so yeah. What do you mean the chemicals in the paint? Yeah. As in taking the lead All out? All taking the lead out, yeah. Because that, that, some of those paint, that paint is like so good. <laughs> That's like the best paint ever. Are you mixing and matching similar colors between One Shot and Ronin? And do you find that one color works better than the other color from a different brand? It's, it's like hit or miss. It's like sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. And I prefer not to like get both because just having the stock is just to spend too much money. But... If I have to, I'll get whatever I need or vice versa. <laughs> I try to keep everything consistently. Uh, if I'm going to use Ronin for one sign, I got to use that for, for the whole thing. I don't like to mix brands. Like I use reducers for one shot, same reducers. The hardener I use, also, it's all the same stuff. So if I ever switch to something else, I got to switch the whole lineup just so it's all the same. I don't want to screw anything up. <laughs> Was pinstriping harder to master than painting signs? Uh, pinstripe, uh, sign painting's actually starting to like get easier because of all the practice that I'm doing. But I think sign painting's probably the same as pinstriping, like the learning curve and everything. It's just different techniques. It, like mastering brush control is like the biggest thing. If you can get that and consistency, then you can like fly through stuff. Uh, pinstriping, same way. It's like how much you want to reduce the paint to get a thickness of a line that you want. Uh, and then consistently, if you're doing symmetrical designs, to carry it on to the other side of the panel. So you have to learn all that stuff before anything starts to look decent at all. And then it's just design-wise. design, design -wise. And then with sign painting, it's layouts. You, you get a good layout and it, it all comes together. When you're painting a sign, do you stick with a lettering quill or you just use whatever brush works for you? I, I change I change things up. I a lot of dudes can do one brush for the whole thing. I like to use all my brushes, so I'll have like six or seven of them out. Just like I like to I like to like get them all give them all a workout, you know. Switching gears a little bit, how important is social media for what you're doing? Uh, I think social media has really helped out with all of this like the art form and everything a lot of people said it was dying art but now it's all coming back like I don't know if it was actually a dying art I think a lot of people just didn't know the other people that were doing the same art as them because you didn't have social media you weren't seeing that you're only seeing what was in your neighborhood or whatever car show you travel to that's all you saw um, you there was magazines and what you saw in the magazine is what you learned. And now it's, you can like leave a comment and get so much information from that one comment that it would have took you years to get, or even like trial and error. But now you just have somebody and it's growing. Uh, with the class, I, I honestly didn't know if people were gonna go for it. And I was like, you know what? I kind of want to show some people because I get a lot of comments and a lot of messages like, how do you do this? What brushes are you using? What paint? And stuff like that. And it's like, I can, I can like tell them, but like, I kind of want to show people. So I was like, let's, let's put a class together. And I got a hold of you. I, I, you, you like got a hold of me and, uh, it blew up. I think I, the class sold out in like three or four days. Nice. And I'm still get, getting people. Like I just had one guy from, I think Ohio say he's getting a plane ticket. I was like, all right. 
But uh, so yeah, so I'm thinking about doing a second class already. The first class is gonna be fun. Uh, a lot of info, a lot of, a lot of paint getting thrown around. It's gonna be great. You mentioned artists reaching out to you for various bits of information. Do you ever reach out to other artists if you want to learn something new or different? Every once in a while, I uh, I reach out. Um, but I like to, I I'm a visual learner. I like watching people. So like if I see them doing something on the video, it's like all right, cool. Like I get to you know I'm, I'm kind of witnessing it. Uh, but if somebody told me how to do something in writing, it's like I don't know. <laughs> Do you find that there's one social media platform that works better for you over another? Instagram, a hundred percent. I I I never liked Facebook. I actually wasn't on Facebook until recently. Like a couple of years ago, I got a new Facebook, and like it's just they want to be paid for all their stuff, and it kind of sucks because Instagram's kind of turning into that. But Instagram's definitely better for me. So you're not on TikTok dancing around like a moron? No. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't get into TikTok. I don't. I don't know what that deal is with that. If you could offer one tip for pinstriping and one tip for sign painting, what would they be? <laughs> Learn consistency. Consistency is key. I think if you can palette the brush and like get your paint to flow right, it, like both pinstriping and sign painting, if you get like a good brush and you get the the paint just right, everything just flows nicely, and you're able to get like everything is crisp and like all your corners and everything. But consistency is. I would say is the the biggest thing to get over. Should the consistency of paint be the same for an outline versus say a large fill area? You can kind of, when you get, when you start doing it a lot, you get like a feel for it. But like sometimes you dry, it goes, you dry brush it and it sucks. And then you're like, all right, well I gotta load it a little bit more or put a little bit of reducer in it to get the flow right. Uh, pinstriping, just getting everything symmetrical and then line weight is just like it has to be on point to, for everything to look right because if you have a blob on one side and a thin one on the side you're like well it looks like shit do you travel far or often to sell your art or to live paint uh i have not i think the farthest i've gone is like three hours away uh i have a buddy in in new york he lets me come up to the shop he has me up for the day and he just fills my day at work he just tells everybody and they all come up and hang out uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, panel jams, yeah, I've done a couple in Maryland. I try, I try to get to them, but it's just hard. What events do you like to go to, just for the inspiration? I don't know. I, like ideas just pop in my head when I'm at places. So like, if I'm at, I, like, if I go to a car show, I'm probably working it. Uh, I enjoy going and looking at paint jobs more than I look at cars or what it is. I, I enjoy that more. Like if there's lettering, I, I gravitate towards that. Uh, if anyone has like some crazy paint jobs, I want to go look at that first. I don't I don't really care about basic shit. Uh, I I've been I've been I was really big into the mini trucking scene, so I was big into that. Uh, I actually worked at a shop. That's where I got my nickname from. Those dudes gave it to me. They we uh, bag trucks and did hydraulics stuff like that. So, uh, like, I would go to those shows, and they just got boring. <laughs> so I was like... You mean just hanging out or your live painting? Hanging out. Like, so I was like, oh, you know, it's, let me try painting at these shows, because that, that scene really didn't have dudes at shows. So I was like, oh, maybe I should just try going there and seeing what's up. And most of the dudes knew me, so they were like, oh, yeah, go see him. And I was like, all right, cool. And then... I pinch right mini trucks. <laughs> what works better for you in terms of promoting yourself? Is it live painting or social media posting? Social media is good for far away. Like I, I've been painting a lot of signs for people in far states. The farthest uh, lately, Hawaii. I've been shipping to her a few, quite a few times. Uh, but I would never have like, I would have never like met up with her at all she's like she would never know who i was if it wasn't for social media uh local shows are good for all the local people like the older dudes that don't go online they come up to you and they're like oh hey what's up like you're you're getting those guys so you're drawing that crowd um 
And then when people see you doing that shows, they're just like amazed. Like it's either they want to come up right next to you. Hey, what are you doing? That's awesome. Or like, wow, you're really good at that. And I'm just like, yeah, it's my first time. <laughs> so they always get a kick out of that. Uh, but yeah, or they want to breathe on you. Yeah, gross. <laughs> Do you find that people want to buy your original art versus a commission request? Uh, original art. I paint things that I want to paint and a lot of people like it. So it's cool. So, um, usually I'd say 80% of the time I'm painting something that I wanted to paint. And then the other times it's requests. So barbershops, tattoo shops. Yeah. And then they get their signage done or they get like a funny saying on a sign. Right. So yeah. Some might say that pinstriping and sign painting is a dying art. What do you think? Is it dying or is there a resurgence? I'm going to say a resurgence. I think there's a lot of people interested and I didn't realize it, but offering the class and all the people that I've never seen their like names pop up are asking me, you know, to do the class. So I'm like, wow, it's a lot more people than I thought it was. And I'm kind of like happy that I can offer that because I kind of wanted, I wanted to grow. I, I find it pretty awesome when people are, you know, doing the same thing, uh, competition wise, whatever, you know, it don't matter, but like charity, you get, you go to a charity event panel jam and you get, you know, 15, 20 people at the smaller ones or even 10, like that number could grow now because people in your area learned how to do it and that raises money for charity. So it's, it's, I think it's a win-win. I don't mind it. I actually, I, I'm actually looking forward to teaching it. Who are some of your artistic influences, either from the past or your peers today? I don't really want to answer that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, there's too, it's like too many names. It's like you get, I get, I get influenced a lot. Like, for example, like skate videos, you skateboard. No, you all right. Ball. So like you would watch a skate video and you get all pumped up and then you go out and do it. So like, you go on Instagram and you see people paint and you're like, wow, that was a bunch of cool stuff. I have to go do something now too. And I kind of get that same feeling. So like it actually a lot, everybody influences me. I like, I like seeing it all. I do like a, you know, a quick scroll like here and there throughout the day. And it's just like, gets you pumped up to go paint something. Yeah. I actually get like bummed out when I can't come out and paint one night. So so back to your workshop, is this the first one you'll be putting on? This is, this is my first time putting a class on. A little nervous, uh, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope everybody learns something and just keeps doing it because it's fun. What can people expect to learn in your intro to pinstriping class? We're going to cover everything from setting yourself up to paint to um, consistency, line weights, uh, design. Uh, we're going to do a panel jam at, at the end. So everybody has a take home of everybody in the class. So hopefully they all enjoy that. Where would you like to see your business and yourself say in five years? Just doing it. <laughs> like I, I have so many like personal things that I have to do first. So this kind of takes like a little bit, not, not technically a back burner, but later in the day, sort of thing uh, I'd like to have a bigger garage and maybe a storefront so the kitchen's gone kitchen yeah we're getting rid of the kids the kid the kids are gone too we're getting rid of them now now uh, I'd like to have like a small uh, like a little custom shop nothing big I don't want to go crazy but I want to be able to have I want to be able to fit like a dually in here a dually, a truck, oh, dually okay. truck, like a bigger, bigger vehicles, uh, or vans. Like I, I just want to be able to, I want, I want, I want to have something that I want to hang out in all day, which would be great. Last question. Any shout outs or closing comments? Can I shout you out? Yeah, of course. Cause you really hook it up and I really appreciate it. It's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.